What's up guys and welcome to this new episode dedicated to Superbase. In the previous video, we have seen how to create and set up a Superbase account, how to create a Superbase project, and finally, we have seen how to connect and fetch some data from Superbase using an Android application. This video will be all about architecture. During this video, I will walk you through all the process of building an Android application using the MVVM architecture by using some Jetpack libraries such as Jetpack Compose for the UI, Compose Navigation, Hilt for Dependency Injection, and of course, all the application will be created on top of Superbase. In this simple app, we will try to see how to insert data into a Superbase table. We will try also to see how to modify the existing data. With that said, let's get started. Before starting writing our first line of codes, let me explain you how the MVVM work. MVVM stands for Model View View Model. The MVVM architecture is the combination of three important components. The first one is the view, the component that is responsible of presenting the UI to the user. In our case, the view will be created with just by Compose. The second component is the view model. The view model is the component responsible for holding and managing the UI data. And finally, the model. The model is the component responsible for holding the data of your application. Note that the data that are represented by the model can come from a remote API, a file, or a local database. In our case, the data will come from Superbase. In order to implement correctly the MVVM architecture, we can decouple this architecture into three major layers as you can see in this first image. The top layer is the UI layer that contains the UI elements that render the data on the screen and the state loader such as a view model that hold and handle the UI logic. The role of the UI layer is to display the application data to the screen and also to serve as the primary point of the user interaction. Whenever the data change added to the user interaction, such as pressing a button or an external input such as a network response, the UI should reflect those changes. Effectively, the UI is a visual representation of the application state retrieved from the data layer. However, the application data you get from the data layer is usually in a different format than the information we need to display. For example, you may only need a part of the data for the UI, or you may need to merge two different sources of data to present the information that are relevant to the user. Regardless of the logic you apply, you only need to pass to the UI the information it's needed. The second layer is a domain layer. And as you can see here, this layer is optional and sits between the UI and the data layer. The domain layer is responsible for encapsulating complex or simple business logic that can be reused by multiple view models. This layer is optional because not all applications will have those requirements and you should use it only when needed. In our simple application, we will skip the domain layer. The last layer, the data layer, as you can see in this second image, is made of repository that each can contain zero or many source and should create a repository for each type of data that the application will handle. For example, you may create a movie repos repository class for the data related to the movies or uh, the payment repository for class that represent or that related to the payment. The repository classes are responsible for the following task, exposing the data to the rest of the application, centralizing the changes to the data, resolving the conflict between multiple data sources, abstracting sources of the data from the rest of the application, and finally, containing the business logic of your application. It's important to note that each data source should have the responsibility of working only with one source of data, which can be a file, a network source such as a REST API, or a local database. Data sources are bridged between the application and the system of data operation. To learn more about this architecture, check out the links in the description below. At this point, you should have a good understanding of the MVVM architecture and all its components. 
Now it's time to set up our project by creating the necessary components that we will put together in order to build our application. And that will be the topic of the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video useful and I will see you in the next one.